Hopefully this format's correct since I'm on a mobile. I was told this would be the best place to post my experience, so I apologize if not. These experiences took place one year after high school, and that was a while ago, so some memories are fuzzy. I was an 18 year old female living home with my dad. I paid rent and worked full time at a grocery store. My stalker, let's call him Dave, who was 18 and was my emotionally abusive boyfriend at the time. He would constantly state how embarrassed he was of my looks and my weight and then flip the narrative and say how miserable he would be if I left him. He would try to pressure me to cut ties with my family and then he would pout when I declined. I was no shrinking violet and I eventually grew tired of the emotional manipulation. The first experience happened while my dad was asleep for his night shift. Dave was at my house trying to pick a fight with me about not moving in with him. Something about that day woke me up and I told him, I'm not doing this anymore. We are not good for each other and I want to be happy. Dave lost it. He started crying and when he realized that that would not work, he kept trying to persuade me to stay with him. I told him no and that we could remain friends, which was the wrong thing to say and that he also needed to leave. He ended up leaving, or so I thought. 30 minutes later, I was making pancakes in the kitchen and I heard my brother's dog Paco growling from under the porch and I found Dave hiding in the corner of the porch. He then bulldozed himself back into the house and told me that he refused to leave until we were back together. I didn't want to wake my dad up because I thought I could handle the situation on my own. I wasn't easily intimidated by men and I was raised by a bunch of rowdy farmers. I told him that I needed to use the bathroom. I grabbed my phone and sped walked into the bathroom and texted one of my guy friends. Let's call him Chris. I explained that I needed help and thank God for Chris. He dropped everything and drove over as fast as he could while I was stuck in the living room with Dave telling me that we were moving in together. It was like nothing I said mattered. Chris walked in and told him to leave or he would be calling the police. Dave cowered down and then booked it, saying he would text me later. The second experience happened about a week or so after I broke up with Dave. I was on my way to work when I noticed my neighbor's car was following me all the way into town. I live in a rural area, so it takes a good 30 minutes just to get into town. Once I parked, my neighbor, let's call her Sally, parked her car and started waving her hands and yelling. I walked over to her, clearly confused, maybe something was wrong with my car. She then ran over and said, that green truck has been following you. She pointed across the parking lot and sure enough, there was Dave in his truck. Sally began to tell me that she saw his truck parked by her house and out of view and she noticed he would leave when I left. She said that it happened about three times and wanted me to know. She told me to call the police. She then hugged me and began yelling obscenities at Dave. I was shaking. I thanked her, then went to clock in for my shift. I came out for my first break hours later and he was still there. I wasn't scared. No, I was furious. I did one of the dumbest things anyone can do in this situation. I stomped over to his truck, I opened the door and began yelling at him to leave me alone and if he doesn't, I would kick his ass. Dave laughed. Some backstory, I'm a very tall woman and I have been known to be a scrappy fighter. No matter how intimidating or angry I was, nothing I said was getting through. When he laughed, that's when the hair stood up on my neck and I left his pickup and went back to work. I then explained the situation to a coworker, and that coworker ended up walking me to my car once my shift was over. Dave continued to stalk me for a few more months and I kept surrounding myself with friends and a taser. I eventually came out and told my dad he was upset that I didn't tell him earlier and he tightened up security around the house as a result. I never called the cops though. Dave's stepdad was in the force and being in a small town that gave Dave more leverage to go about with no consequences. I was finally able to shake him from stalking me when I got a new boyfriend who is now my husband but that'll be a whole nother story. 
my neighbor and my friend were very helpful. Knowing what I know now, if I wasn't warned by them, I would probably be in a whole different situation. Maybe I'll share more encounters of Dave the Stalker in another post. Hi guys, this encounter just happened three days ago and I'm still pretty shaken up. I'm an 18 year old female student and where I'm from, July is an exam period for everyone, so I end up bringing my backpack everywhere. It was 7am and my exam was starting at 9, so I decide to call my Uber and get there early because I live about an hour away from the exam center. The car arrives on time and I go in. I'm not usually someone to judge someone with one glance, but for some reason the driver made me feel very uneasy. He was in his mid-40s and he had dark circles around his eyes. He was silent for about 10 minutes. He then asked me if I was a student. I didn't want to answer, thinking that he would try to hit on me if I said yes, so I ended up lying and telling him that I was a proctor for one of the exams, hoping he would back off, but damn, I was wrong. He then started to smirk and tell me that he would always cheat on his exams and I was a mean person for ruining people's lives. I don't know why I did this, but I ended up chuckling at that comment and this probably triggered him more, thinking that I was liking this. He then started asking me personal questions like how old I was and if I would let my kid cheat. I lied and told him that I was 34 and that I had a 16 year old kid. Mind you, I look pretty old, I'm overweight and I don't have the best genetics. I was hoping this would drive him off since I was old and had a kid, but then he just got creepier. He then asked me if my husband was strict like me, and I told him that he was even stricter, hoping to make him sound like a dude he did not want to mess with. That shut him up for a little while, until I noticed he was driving to a completely different region. I'm not a map, but I know that the exam center could not be reached from that direction. I started to panic, but I was afraid he would do something if I confronted him since we were in the middle of a rural area. So I decided to get a fake phone call from one of my coworkers. I told the person on the fake call that I was in an Uber and that I would be there soon. And I shit you not, when he heard that comment, he turned the car around and went into the right direction. He continued to make flirty jokes until this happened. I swear, this turned my blood cold. As we were approaching the center, he told me that I should catch someone cheating, come back to the car with them, and then just drive around so he could make extra money, and then he would drop me off at my address. The creepy part was that he had studied my address by heart, legit looked at my address, then looked at me and back to the address in sort of a I know where you live kind of way. I still remember the car he drove, it was a blue Nissan. If I ever Uber again and get stuck with a blue Nissan, I will cancel it no matter what. I didn't call the company because I was afraid that he would come after me since he knew my address and I just don't want to be associated with him. Fuck him. So creepy guy whose intentions I didn't know, let's not meet. This all happened roughly around 3 or 4 years ago, but the experience has haunted me almost every single day since it happened. I'll start off by saying that at the time I was pretty young, single, and very keen to having my first experience with a guy. I spent a while looking through dating apps and talking to people until I finally came across a guy and we had a lot in common so I thought it would be a good idea to meet up with him since we had been talking for almost a month. Now even though I was only young, I wasn't naive or stupid. I was, and still am, a very cautious and paranoid person, but for some reason that day, I made what possibly could have been the worst decision of my entire life. I invited him to come spend the night at my house. My parents were away for the weekend, and I had the house to myself, so it seemed like the perfect opportunity for him to come over. He lived around 4 hours away from my house, yet he was eager and almost desperate to come see me. So we set off as soon as he finished work, which was around 11am. 
The whole time he was driving to my place, I had a sickening sense of doom, almost if something was going to go very, very wrong. I almost texted him multiple times to tell him that I wasn't interested in meeting anymore, but I hesitated as he was only 10 minutes away by this point. I jump up as I hear his car pull into the driveway, and I expected to be greeted with a smile once I opened the door, but he pushed his way through and continued to stare at me blankly, all while my two French bulldogs snarled and growled at him, which they never ever do. Things instantly seemed very odd. He followed me quickly to my bedroom and didn't waste any time in aggressively undressing me which I hesitantly went along with as this was my first experience with a man, especially as he was almost six years older than me, so I was pretty tense. Fast forward to a couple hours later, he suddenly asked me if he could sleep in my room, which confused me as it was only 5pm. I told him it was fine and I would continue watching movies by myself downstairs. After about an hour, I heard what sounded like furniture being moved around and the sound of him talking. So I made my way upstairs and I found him crouching in the middle of my room and breathing extremely heavily. When I asked him if he was okay, he motioned for me to get on the bed where he sat me on his lap and proceeded to place a blindfold over my eyes and put his hands around my neck. I was already feeling extremely uncomfortable which worsened as he tightened his grip around my throat. Then he says, Does anyone know I'm here? Do your friends know who I am or what I look like? I instantly answered saying that my sister and friends who lived nearby knew what he looked like. This was a complete lie as I don't have a sister and my friends were unaware, but something inside forced me to say it. After minutes of awkward silence, he stood up to gather his things and I noticed that in his backpack he had tape, rope, and handcuffs, which at first didn't concern me as I knew he was into that stuff, but looking back I think it was intended for something much worse. All of a sudden he said, I think I'm gonna go home, I have a long drive and I'm rather tired. I didn't hesitate and I was already extremely uncomfortable. As he left, he failed to make any eye contact or say goodbye. I ran back to my room and I found a note on my desk with the words, Being nice is what saved you. I had no idea what the note meant, but now that I think about it, I think he had some very ill intentions towards me. I'm still angry at myself for even letting a stranger into my home, which is obviously a big mistake, and I immediately blocked him on all of my social media. I'm just so lucky that I made it out alive. All I know is that he's now somewhere back in America. I don't really know why he was living in the UK at the time I met him, but all I can say now is that I'm very glad that he is many, many miles away from me. This is a messed up story with so many details that I'm not sure how to structure it. I'll probably forget to add some parts, but I'll divide it into chapters so it'll be easier to navigate. I used to live in Stockholm, Sweden. There I attended high school and met my then boyfriend Jack. He will come into play later. I had a Jiffyo back when that was a thing. I used to use GIFs to link to my blog to show makeup, hairstyles, etc. For those who don't know what a Jiffya was, it was basically Instagram, but only for GIFs. The site did have its downsides, particularly the nasty, sexual messages you could get quite often. Then this person Robin started following me and was so nice and friendly. It felt like genuinely like Robin wished me all the best and made me happy whenever he or she would write. Robin said that she or he was a male, 23 at the time, and was from the US, but had Swedish relatives. I thought that was really cool, and we would chat a few times a month in English. I also loved to sing, and I uploaded covers to YouTube. Robin would be so excited when I released new covers. It was so nice to have an online friend who seemed truly happy for me. 
Although this behavior started to become too much sometimes, and it started to feel wrong, Robin then sent me a drawing, and he said it was a portrait of me. It was a girl with animal ears, making a cute pose with her hand, piercing green eyes and whiskers. He said that it was me, but mixed with a cat, my favorite animal. I was beyond impressed. It was so cute, and I was so flattered that someone would draw me. But then, the excitement turned to ash in my mouth one night. This is when things started for real, where the flags should have gone up. I play League of Legends, and one of my favorite champions back then was Ari, especially in her Firefox Ari skin. I was scrolling through Safari on my phone to find a wallpaper of her to have on my phone, and then I saw the picture, the fan art Robin made, only that the eyes were now yellow, like Aris. I clicked the picture and it linked me to a deviant art account, and the caption was something like, Casual cute Firefox Ari, posted three years ago. I wrote to Robin and told him how upset I was that he stole a drawing from an artist, then edited the colors and claimed to have worked hard and making it himself. I explained to him how awful it is to take someone else's work and say that it was yours and that you made it. He said that he was ashamed and sorry and he only wanted to impress me and to make me smile. I couldn't stay mad at him for long, but now I was wary. It had been a while since I had posted a cover, and Robin made sure as hell that I knew that it had been a while. He would nag and nag and plead with me to make another one, to the point that I had to tell him to back the flipping burgers off, then I posted one a few weeks later. I broke up with Jack, the boyfriend. We went our different ways and it was okay. Robin on the other hand was not. He couldn't for the sake of humanity grasp why we had broken up and pleaded yet again, but this time, it was pleading for me to get back together with Jack. I tolerated this at first because to most people, Jack and I seemed perfectly happy. I got really upset with Robin because after a few days on end, he would ask me if Jack and I were getting back together, and I had to explain that Jack was being unfaithful, seeing other girls, and flirting with them. Robin's response was, Oh, but you can't forgive him? You guys aren't getting back together? I was done, and I told Robin to leave me alone. I was scrolling on the internet and thought one night that I wanted to listen to others doing the same cover that I did. I started scrolling through the list and I saw my face on a thumbnail. The only thing was though, this was not my video and not my account. My heart froze and I felt myself growing cold. I clicked the link and my audio started playing. It was my voice, my picture, but not my name. I clicked the profile and the coldness intensified. Every cover of me, every video from my own YouTube, Instagram, friends YouTube channels, and SoundCloud were all on there. The videos dated back two whole years. The account said that her name was Jenny and she was the one singing and producing the music, even going as far as taking videos of my relatives and saying that it was her family. I was so confused, scared, and angry. Who would do this? I then got my answer with the most twisted thing that I ever experienced online. It was in the comments section to one of the videos. There were comments from Robin. One of Robin's comments read, Thanks so much Jenny for dedicating this song to me. And Jenny replied, Oh no bother Robin, I made it all for you. The stalker had to be either two stalkers, or this person made up two characters and was talking to him or herself through the comments. This freaked me out big time. I wrote to all my friends whose content was stolen, and I told them to help me shut this account down, and luckily it was shut down within 20 hours. I locked all of my social medias, removed everyone I didn't know in real life, I Google image reverse all of my profile pictures and nothing came up. I was paranoid for about a year after this and I didn't trust anyone I didn't know in real life. Robin made new accounts to follow me, which I then blocked. I have an official Instagram for work and such which she or he could be looking at. I've now just accepted it's something that may happen and that I shouldn't live in internet fear because of one person. 
I logged into Tumblr because I wanted to see if I had some juicy memes. Yeah, I know, cringe. I then saw blocked accounts. Only one was blocked. Guess who? Robin changed the Tumblr blog from his or her Robin fakery to something new and something personal. The blog was filled with angst, just like any other Tumblr, but this was filled with self-hatred posts, extremism and racism, and long posts that were written in Swedish. And this is when it hit me. This person had to be Swedish. I told my best friend to go through the blog and use her FBI skills and see if she could sniff something out. I'll combine all the evidence that we know so far. The stalker was probably born in 1989, and he or she lives in the same part of the city as my parents. We're not sure on the gender. The stalker couldn't go to high school with me, but must have known me through somewhere else, maybe mutual friends. He or she stole my content for years, pretended to be my friend only to get more content, and they're probably still checking in on me. My best guess is that it was a girl who wanted to be me, have my life, and my boyfriend. When I stopped creating new content, her whole made-up world started falling apart. If Robin somehow reads this, I hope you'll find acceptance and happiness in yourself, because it's no life living it through someone else. Go in peace.